of having fun on Wired Wednesday. Don't we, Jesse? I don't know. Those of you weird. Yeah, maybe. It, it, it can, well, I don't think they're going to help that. Different. Anytime you bring me on, it might be a little weird or odd. But even so, the point of Wired Wednesday is to keep this community connected, right? And in turn with that is making sure people feel connected to each other. It's not only about events going on. It's not just about the different businesses happening, you know, yeah. in town. But it's, it's also making sure people feel the need to feel connected with each other. And I think that's where our mindset has really shifted. People. Feel the need or feel the effects of? Both. Okay. Both, because if I don't feel the need to connect with other humans, I'm not going to go to the grocery store and I'm just going to do pickup or delivery. Yeah, but some people truly don't get energy from connecting people. Like, truly, they're introverts. But it doesn't mean that connection can't be very um, powerful. Agreed. So today, what we're going to talk about. It started out as what, what we eat, right? Originally, it was um, how do, what is the effect of what we eat on us? Well, no, no, no. What we eat, we become. Okay, right. And, and I said, well, that, that's true in every area of our life, Wh whether it's our food, whether it's our spiritual um, intake, whether it's our um, social intake, our energy intake. Mm -hmm. like every aspect of our life um, lives by that statement. So I think it was in like 2014 or 15, so almost 10 years ago, I stopped watching the news because I realized every time I watched the news, I got anxiety for what things are happening well beyond my, Crazy. well yeah. beyond my control. Right. Yeah. So then I stopped listening to national yeah. news. I tried to keep a pulse on like local news and different things, mm -hmm. but then I really started watching, you know, in the last six months, I watched my creamer intake in my coffee, right? I was like, oh, it's only like 15 to 30 calories a serving, right? Mm -hmm. But like three or four servings in one okay. cup. Well, one okay, cup. Okay, one cup. And then okay. you have five or six cups in a morning. Yeah, that, that, that's that. four or 500 extra calories that I did not yeah. account for because it was a convenience thing. You so know, as I, soon as I stopped that, before I before I even had to look at calorie intake, or, um, I, I, I can eat it. I, I might look thin, but I can eat a lot. And I love Costco combination pizza before they got rid of it. I could literally sit down and eat a whole pizza of the Costco pizzas. Right, like a huge and, and that, I've seen Not even thinking about that it was about 4,000 calories. That's better if you don't think I, I can even, right? But it became a running joke in, in, my, in our office about the Costco pizza. And I'm four calories. It was a lot. It was like three, 4,000 calories. I can't even remember, but so um, when, I can't do that anymore because I, I can't, um, when I started gaining weight at about 50, I, I can't take it off. Jeez. Well, I mean, it just takes that. So then, best segue, right? The longer we consume something, the harder, the harder it, is it is to, to get change. rid of. Yeah. My mind. If I'm feeding my mind negative scroll troll comparisons, a thief of joy, things off of social media, national media, my friends that people I've circled with, if I'm feeding all this negative energy into me, what is my soul becoming? Right? How am I showing up as a person if I constantly feed this, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna call it dark energy, right? Into my body. My light is now very well diminished, and it it's and true. it has a huge effect. That's true on how I show up for myself, right? The dark thoughts, the dark, the dark negative self talk, mm -hmm. the dark things going on I, in my I'm brain. I'm not good enough, or I'm not as good as they are. Yeah. I'll never be enough for my spouse. Mm -hmm. They'll always want somebody else. They're, you know, I'll never be a good mom. I'll never do this. I'll never become more than what I have my limiting beliefs. But if I keep feeding myself limiting beliefs and dark energy, I can only show up that way, right? Mm -hmm. Spiritually, well, well mentally, it's in that it's in that old saying, and I've said this for years. So many, I, I see so many people, including me, a long time ago would 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 be say something like, "Well, that's just who I am." 
And it's such a concrete statement that allows zero change. But, right, because it doesn't allow the question, okay, that's who I am, but am, am I happy with the result? I think you want to be. Am I truly happy with the results that I'm getting, right, in my life? And if I'm not, then I have to change who I am being. I don't have to change everything about who I am, but I definitely have to change who I am being if I don't like the results that I'm getting. So then in 10 years ago, I was going through some pretty big stuff, pretty big stuff in my life. I had just finished my bachelor's degree. I was working super part or I was working full time for a, one of the number one employers in the county. Like I thought that I was Maybe. where I needed to be. Maybe. Right. And then some big shifts happened in my life. And then I had to really see it step back and be like, what am I feeding myself? Mm -hmm. Right. The energy, the, the different things. And, and I really had to come to grips with this is who I am today. And this is who I want to become. So I have to shift. I have to go through this. That's right. You, so you have to shift in where you live. And when I, when I, what I mean by that is in here, right? In, in your heart, in your mind. You know, for instance, if I always want to be a great example is if I, I, I in my in my in my history, I, I I carried a lot of shame because of my past life, right? Some alcoholism and drug addiction, and just huge shame where I couldn't even talk about it in public, and I was afraid of um, people knowing. And, and as long as I lived in that quietly, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it wasn't even who I was anymore. Like, I'm, 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 she's 20, at the time, 12 years sober, now almost 20 years sober. So it's not even who I am today, but I was still being controlled by that behavior 20 years ago. So then, and I remember this and... <sighs> And this is what's really, it was really pivotal for me observing you through these challenges mm -hmm. is at a, at a time in your life, you literally carried rocks around. I did. Rocks <laughs> around it to symbolize. And it was the actually the ugliest rock that I could find too, because that shame is so ugly too. That negative thinking and that negative shame and that binding energy is the ugliest thing I've ever experienced. So I wanted it to be reality. It couldn't be just some pretty It had to symbolize rock. what it was. It had to, it, and it had to be heavy. So it was like a, a 10 pound rock or maybe, that's probably exaggerating, but it was pretty big and it was rough. When I carried it in my hands, it would scratch my fingers. And not only did he have, like he- So I, I went all in on that. From the couch to the kitchen, I, I had to carry it. If you move from the kitchen to his desk, he carried it. I had then, to just like I had to carry it, like a like a protector, like a because because I was already carrying it everywhere anyway. Greatest greatest assignment, other than actually it's not probably the most powerful assignment I was ever given is that they photoshopped me as an adult and me as a child with a protecting father hands around my chest. And I had to carry that around and look at it four or five times a day for a month and think about how, how protected I was and how loved I was. And that was probably the most powerful. And then you go into these deep, dark closets. Well, we didn't expect to go here today. <laughs> what happens is as soon as we start acknowledging those things, our lives change. They start to shed. And, and all of a sudden, we start to share some of those things that we thought were so bad. And what we find out is other people are also going through those same things and are also carrying that same burden, are also hiding. And from those lessons, we want to help each other through those things. Yeah. I've often said, yeah. I am at a certain part on the ladder of life or in business or whatever. There are people below me. There are people above me. I want to be the one. I want to be the person that is helping people up the ladder. Mm -hmm. And people, because people are helping me up the ladder. And I want to shift everybody up. 
I want to help everybody up. And I show up in my daily life wanting to do the next best thing. And I can only do that. I can only do that if I'm feeding myself the right thing or the things that bring energy into my life. Right. A whole package of Oreos with a glass of milk is not necessarily the right thing every day. Now, well, but is it okay occasionally? Is one cookie okay a little bit, right? Or can I help and have a good conversation with another mom or another business owner or another dad of, oh, it's supposed to be perfect. But if we choose to show up and better our lives a little bit every day, the 1% will change us every day. It'll, and it'll change us a lot over time, massively. And so you go back Mass, to what you feed massively. yourself. You feed yourself positive things, even if it's so, five minutes of gratitude a day. So now we talked about those couple of assignments and, and they were really big. But, but over the last 20 years, one little shift at a time, I went from living suicidal a majority of my life. So probably from six until 30, 40, 44, 44, mm -hmm. to when that, when I finally broke that, I, I, I haven't had that thought or um, that thought for eight, eight years, eight, nine years. And, what and I lived with it before that every, because of the shame, right? Because I was, I was what I did, my heart. And, and how do we actually treat people that way too? How do you sometimes. Show, do you show up in judgment? Right. So do I show up in judgment of people because of what they've done or what I think they've done? Or the success that they've had. Or the success that they've had. I can't celebrate them because of my own shame internally of what's going on or my own disappointment in myself. I can't help celebrate them. And our society is almost training us to do this. And it's really yeah, sad. Yeah it, yeah, it trains us not to be in our wins. We can't talk about our wins or we're bragging or we're egotistical. And I, I actually think that's sad because it's whatever really we sad. focus on will it's no doubt whatever we focus on will expand so if we're just focusing on our negativity or the hard things in our lives they will definitely come forth and expand but if we're focusing on and talking about and winning in our lives with our people that's true and it's not about money it's about winning with my family it's about winning with my energy it's about winning with my bike riding it's about just winning in life and being more happy if we can focus on that more together more of that will actually show up so one thing that our fearless leader was talking about uh it's been a little while i think but you know we should we need an accountability group almost mm -hmm. you know and and it's not to hold people to the fire of, of negative consequences. It's to hold people to the fire of positive consequences. If I had an accountability group of, of what three or three to five things are you grateful for today? And they have to be deep gratitude, mm -hmm. not surface. Like I'm, I'm grateful for the sun. I'm grateful for the rain. Those are pretty surface, right? But if I'm truly grateful for how I showed up today because of this situation, I chose not to embrace my shame, but to embrace my joy. Yeah. What would that change or shift in people's life? Well, it would shift a lot. And I, and I wanna I wanna reframe that for myself for a second. It's not about holding other people accountable. It's about holding myself accountable to what I want. Great. Um a great example of that is when I started riding my mountain bike, if I, I I'd have to take a really long loop if I was by myself. Because if I got too close to the truck on a short loop, I'd quit. Mm -hmm. So I learned to just take a loop, the longest loop so that when I got halfway, I wasn't close to the truck and couldn't turn back. And But when I'm with other people, when I'm in a pack, the thought of quitting doesn't even happen. So 
So then you take this into the low so level of some accountability, right? So I was I was listening to something this morning and Brendan Burchard said something about because he's from Montana and he talks about the true wolf pack. So many people, including me, I want to be independent or I want to do it myself or I can I think, only do it myself. I can only do it myself. And he said the lone wolf in an actual wolf pack is the weak one. It's the one that can't actually keep up. The strong wolves are hunting and living and thriving As in a pack. pack. And they're the strongest. And they get more done. And, and they win more. That blew my mind. And, and when I thought about it, I said, that's so true. That's why I actually stay on a team. Because I will always accomplish more on the team. Well, and we will always accomplish more. Because of the more. energy. Well, and we'll accomplish more in life in general because of that group mm -hmm. that we surround ourselves with. Right. We, are, we are the top, we are the five people we surround ourselves with, right? Yeah. I actually just joined a coaching group because I need to level up my five. Because cool. of, it's a national company with different businesses and di different entrepreneurs and things. And I joined this group because I am, I don't want to be a lone wolf. I don't want to be outside of this, but I need to figure out a different level and I can only do that by shifting what's around me. Yeah, and, and you'll and you'll and you'll go further because of it. In every, I, and I would argue every area of your life will get better. Right. Your personal life, your spiritual life, your financial life, your mental health. Well, and it's really incredible. Like if you go, if you go deep through this, like what we what we eat, we become. Right. So if I'm eating positive affirmations, gratitudes, if I'm reading good development books, I mean, I just finished The Mastery of Love again. I read it probably once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. I read, I'm reading um, Becoming More by Diana Kukoska. Kuk yeah. That's incredible cool. book, right? She's an incredible lady. I'm listening to The Ultimate by, with Steve Hardison, and it's written by his, um, one of his colleagues and his wife, what? Amy. Yeah. But like those shift you they give you cold chills they mm. they ask you to show up for the world because the world needs you and needs your light so stop feeding yourself full of this dark energy i i i really believe that i and i used to argue about affirmations that they they're just hocus pocus they don't want work they they're fat but I, then i realized well i'm telling myself something every day anyway if it's not intentional, then it's negative. Right. If I'm not intentionally telling myself, looking for the positive things in myself, I am naturally looking for the bad things. That's the default. Or, or, or I'm trying to make excuses for whatever. Or I can just intentionally go, hey, what's actually, what am I actually good at? What, where am I winning? And the how can I get more of that? No, winning I is, I got out of bed today. Sometimes winning, it is. Winning is feeding the children. Yeah, sometimes it is. Right? And if that's just tough for us, it's tough for me, guys. Yeah. Give yourself grace. Know that we're in oh, this that's world good. together. It's, I actually like top room. Well, I know. With a whole different combination of things in it. Yeah. But you never know what I'm going to put no. in. No. So... I encourage all of our listeners, whether you're on social media or or out in radio land, if you can find five things that you want to change about feeding yourself with, I encourage you to post it on Facebook or get your group together for that accountability. Hey, I need help in shifting my life in X direction. You know, I, I am such a cheater. <laughs> I, I truly am. I am a cheater. I will Google top 200 gratitudes Ooh! i found one the other day top 500 gratitudes just to start with. so i can come up Put with something brain. different every day right so yep. i can train my brain to start thinking positive because otherwise i'm sitting there for 15 minutes going. so people think i'm the most positive guy in the world and, and it's not natural i'm, I'm intentionally making myself do that because I don't ever want to go back to wanting to kill myself again. Never want to go back there. there and living in shame. And there's so many resources out there. Find your tribe, find your mindset, shift your energy, 
show up in this world a little bit different every day and a little bit better for you, yourself, your family, your children, um, your community. Thank you guys so much for joining us for Wired Wednesday. As we round this up, I want to make sure that we do a quick plug. Rodeo season is is upon us. We just had the Cedar Junior Rodeo last Saturday. Um, we have the Spring Roundup in St. George coming May 17th and 18th at the Dixie, Dixie Roundup um, Arena. And then there's, I cannot find the date for, oh, the Windy Wood Memorial is also coming up in, in the next couple of months as well. Like Spring Rodeo is here. So we have the May 17th through 18th down in St. George. We have the Windy Wood Memorial Rodeo June 2nd and 3rd here at our Cross Hollow Events Center over on Cross Hollow Road. We are so excited that rodeo season is upon us. Make sure and get out there. Agriculture is the lifeblood of our communities here in Southern Utah. Jesse, it is always an honor to have you on. And I really, I love where this show is going. I love that we have the ability to just kind of just roll with it. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us for Wired Wednesday. This is your host, McKinnon Hansen, your local Farm Bureau financial agent at 435-592-2021, all things insurance related. And for real estate, I am with the Larkin Group at KW Realty at GoCedarCity.com. Thank you for joining us for Wired Wednesday.